So in this video, I'm actually going to talk about how to get more reviews, which is a huge challenge for indie authors, um, but mostly because they're not asking. They're not asking for reviews, and they feel uncomfortable asking for reviews, or they don't know who to contact or who to ask. Um, so we're going to fix all of that right now. You have to keep in mind, most people aren't going to review your books. If you get 1,000 downloads, maybe one person will you know, decide to leave a review, and mostly those people, like it's going to be the people who didn't like the book, who want to actually go and leave a review, um, more so than pe if people just liked it and enjoyed it, they just may not feel like writing a review, which is why you really have to ask in the back of your book, please go review my book and add a link to your book or the review page. So people, you know, it's okay to, to say, you know, I'm a struggling indie author and your review is so critical and so important. Please take a second and leave a an honest review. It doesn't have to be a raving review or a five-star review, just you know any review, an honest review. That's all you're really asking for. So you want to make that ask in your book so that people are buying. When they buy or download your book, they actually go back and review it. Um, that's critical. But also, we need to find reviewers who might review our book and email them. Um, and so we're going to do that by... I'm just going to click on some mermaid books, and I'm going to see who the reviewers are. This isn't actually a great example. I'm going to find another. Um, I'm going to look at Wake by Amanda Hawking. And of course, you would do this for your own genre, for other books that are very similar to your books, so that readers who liked that book might be interested in reading your book also. And so I just go down to the reviews and I'd click on these. This is somebody who didn't like the book. So you want to be careful if they didn't like the book, um, they might not like your book. But you can also see if they didn't like the book for some certain reason, maybe they'll like your book more. They like the type of book. They just weren't happy with this particular effort. And so usually when you click, you're going to see something like this, um, which you know doesn't really help you. But probably about a third of the reviewers are going to have contact information because a lot of these people have their own blogs and they leave reviews regularly. So you just have to start clicking. So here's one that gives a website. And you just want to make a list. So you want to just say, um, you want to keep it like when you email people, you're going to have to say, I saw that you reviewed this other book that's similar to my book. Or at least you want to say, I saw that you review a lot of books in this category or genre, um, because that's the way you need to introduce yourself. But you can start making a list of websites. So in this, like I've already started, and um, I've got about 100. I'm going to get up to 500. So this is Amanda Hawking's Wake. And I've just been copying the information from Amazon. And you might think this is really weird, but most of the people who have information, they're book reviewers. So they don't mind if you ask them to review a book because they have a website about it. They probably get a lot of submissions. So you need to be aware of that and you need to make sure that your email stands out. But first you have to know who they are. So you have to just, I mean, I've spent hours doing this, and you have to do this on your own. But here's another one. They have a blog. Some of them have a name, some of them don't. But you can usually find that information on their website. So I, I mean, I'm just going to spend a few hours. I said earlier, I was talking about the negative thing, where most of the reviews on the home page are going to be negative. That's something we talked about that you want to try to fix a little bit. Um, but if I go into like, you know, the five star ratings, then I can just click on all the positive reviews and copy the information. So here's another one with a website. This one doesn't have a website, so I can't really do anything. Once you have the website, 
then later you can go to their website, you can find their contact information page. Some of them put their email right on their Amazon page. So once you have that information, you could just email them directly. Um, but you want to, I mean, ideally, you know, for every 10 people you email, maybe one of them will get back to you or ask for a review copy. Um, but a lot of people won't. So this is kind of a numbers game. You know, you're, you're emailing strangers, basically, and you want to reach out to as many people as you can. So, like, I'm going to email, I'm going to try to go through all of the best-selling mermaid books in my category, and I'm going to try to email as many people as possible, um, like 500, because if I email 500, then I might get 50 reviews, and that would be a decent number to start with. So it takes a lot of effort and time, but it's got to be done. When you email people, you can email something kind of like this. Um, dear reviewer name, if you can find their name. I saw your Amazon review of this other book. Or you could just say, I see that you review a lot of Amazon books about this thing or in this genre. I want to see if you're interested in another. And I would actually add some keywords, dark fantasy, young adult mermaid book because that tells them exactly what it is. I might even say romance. You can say I'm a new author. Um, you can give them some credibility boosters. So I said I'm working on my PhD in literature just so they know, like I may not be the best writer in the world, but at least it should be decent and it won't be full of bad spelling. Um, so if you have any credibility boosters, if you have a website, I told them a little bit more about my story, why I think they'll like it, um, why it's better than some of the other stuff out there, and you want to offer it to them for free. And what I'll usually do, like you may, what's easy to do is to put up a PDF or the ebook on a landing page or a web page and just say, um, I would usually say I can also send you a paper back if you prefer. It gets expensive to send out paperbacks, but you want to make the offer anyway. So you want to say, I have a PDF or ebook available that's free. You can download it right now. Or if you do a KDB free campaign, you can just say, my book is free today for the next five days so that you can get it and review it. I would appreciate it so much. But you can also make the offer and say, I can give you a paperback if you prefer, because a paperback is a real thing. So they know if you send them a free paperback, you know, it might only be worth five bucks, but you know, it's a real tangible thing. Some people like real books. Some people will want a real book. Most people won't. Um, so even if you email 500 people, maybe only 10 or 20 of them will ask for a paperback. And you should definitely send them out because, you know, that paperback costs you probably five bucks on CreateSpace. It might cost you 10 bucks to send. Um, but you want to be sending out your paperbacks into the world because there's a more likely chance a reviewer will actually review it if you have a great cover and it's a well-designed book. Um, if not, when they pick it up, they'll know it was just badly produced and they might not start reading. But if you produce it well, Sending out a really nice paperback quality book makes your book a little more real. And when the reviewer is done with it, they can pass it on or they can even donate it. They'll put it in the library. They'll put it in a secondhand bookstore so other people can find it again. You're increasing the chances that more people will find and buy your book. So I wouldn't, I mean, I, I wouldn't be too cautious about sending out paperbacks. But also, like, if you did get overrun, you could just say, I'm going to give away 25. You don't need to tell them this, but you can just say, I'm only going to give away 25 paperbacks, like set a, a, um, a limitation. And then if people get back to you, like after the first 25 people request a paperback, you can say, I'm sorry, I'm out of paperbacks right now, and I just have the PDF or the ebook. Thanks for understanding. So if you get, like, if you're spending too much money sending out paperbacks and you don't want to do it anymore, um, I still think you should make the offer because it makes you stand out. But 
when they get back to you, you can respond by saying, you know, I'm out of review copies. I'm very sorry. I just have the paper, the PDF or the ebook. That's fine. And then you can stop sending out, sending out the paperback books. Um, you would also probably want to, like I will usually, usually just send a paperback book directly from Amazon. I'll just order one and send it. But if they ask for a book, it's probably a good idea to order a bunch of them, send them to your house so that you can put in a note, like a personal note, and say thank you so much. If you know their name, you can do it handwritten. You can add their name. Send them a personal letter saying that you appreciate them taking the time to review your book and put that in the book, um, possibly with some nice little thing. Like for my mermaid book, I have some little silver mermaid keychains that I could include and say, thanks so much for taking the time. Here's, you know, a little free gift. I don't think that's, some people would say that that's like buying reviews and it's really scammy. I think you're appreciating that somebody else is taking the time to, to even take a chance on your book. And you just want to make that a really good experience for them. You want to make them, you want to make sure they know how grateful you are that they're taking the time. So for me, it's not, I'm not buying reviews. I'm just saying thank you um, and trying to give as much as I can to the reviewers. So that's how I come from it. But yeah, this is definitely a very involved process. But when you launch your book, you should ask a lot of people to review it, um, which is, you know, difficult at first. And you can try to make that a little easier by getting at least 10 reviews up quickly so that when a reviewer goes to your book, they don't just see zero reviews. Nobody wants to be the first person to review a book. So if you can get 10 positive reviews up right away really quickly with your friends or family or anybody, um, you'll have a better chance of getting more reviews because you're not starting from nothing. So even like before you send out any emails to total strangers, I'd send out some emails I don't, I don't like to ask my friends and family to post book reviews for me, but I will build my email list quickly so that I have some people who I can get to review the book quickly. Anyway, so that's the third. Uh, I've done some videos just about, this is kind of basic Amazon stuff. You need to have your Amazon stuff set up the right way because otherwise when you get the traffic and send people to Amazon, they aren't buying the book. You, if you're losing them in that funnel, if your Amazon page doesn't work and doesn't sell the book, then sending more traffic or building an email list or um, getting a, like content marketing where you get a lot of traffic to your site and then send them to the Amazon page, none of that's going to work if the basics of your Amazon page are not making the sale. Um, so that's why I started with these videos. But next we'll get into starting to set up your author platform. And I'll start with some quick wins that we can focus on first, and then we'll get into more detail.